Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 in Kappa Mode. So I was just kind of looking at Embers a little bit here, trying to figure out what there is to know about this mod. I uh, went through the Ancient Codex and was just looking at ways to transfer Ember a little bit faster. So I discovered these Ember Funnels, and we knew about the Copper Cells. These just hold a whole lot of Ember in it. So the Ember Funnel is kind of like a hopper, kind of. Essentially, it acts like the Ember Receiver. I was going to point at one, but we don't have one. We used to have one right here. It acts like the Ember Receiver. We have the Ember Emitter and then the Ember Receiver. Um, but yeah, I found out that there's Ember Ejectors. These transfer 10 times more Ember per burst than the uh, Ember Emitters here. So these are way better. And those connect to the Ember Funnel, which can receive a lot more. So I think it's receiving 200 Ember per burst, I think. Well, anyway, um, yeah, so we got a large amount of ember here, and then the ember funnel here should be pushing the ember down into our beam cannon. And currently we have zero ember. Actually, this doesn't appear to be working, does it? I thought this was working a little bit ago. Maybe this doesn't actually work this way. Hmm. But we definitely have stuff in here. And I tried putting this directly on the beam cannon. That didn't work. Maybe this had residual ember in it. Okay, let me undo this. So we can place this right here. We can put the dial on there so we can see how much ember is in here or whatever. Uh, let's try linking this again. So I do a shift right click onto here and then a right click onto there. Yeah, so you can see we're getting 400 ember per burst. And that's going into our beam cannon here. And this will just fill up to 2,000 and then it will stop. Yep. So there we go. Uh, I just also put down an energy condenser Mark II, and I guess I forgot to click that button there. So now we're feeding all sorts of ember into our ember activator here. Yep. Now it's kind of looking through the book a little bit more, and it seems like there's some other things that we could do to speed this up. There's this advanced ember transfer thing, and this is talking about the ember spread burst. I don't know if that's a separate block or something. I know there's the beam splitter. Anyway, uh, I was looking for that uh, in the Ember mod here in Project Ozone 3, and I'm not seeing that particular thing, so I don't know if they're talking about something else or if it's just disabled in this mod pack. Anyway, uh, the whole reason why we're looking at this is because we have to do these flame barriers. More Ember stuff. Uh, this is something that we haven't had to make yet, and we're going to have to make a bunch of them, so I was trying to figure out, you know, a faster way of doing this. So it'll save me a bit of time anyway. Uh, so let's try... And make one of these together. So it was that and then silver and then it was this ember crystal on top. And then we need to get ourselves uh, 16 to 32 ash in each one of these different ones. One with the dawnstone, one with the silver aspectus. So let's grab some ash. Let's see, we need, this is the ember stuff. Yeah, so 16. We'll put the bare minimum in there. And I'm sure this is going to fail. But once it does fail, we will get the alchemical waste that will tell us how far off we were. And then we'll know the exact amounts that put into here. So yeah, I'll go ahead and wait for this to finish up here, and then we will be right back. Alright guys, so I set up some basic automation here. It's not fully automated, but we probably could automate this fully if we wanted to. So we have a chest here with all the ingredients that goes into this recipe. So it's one stack of that and three stacks of the Dawnstone plates. I've doubled that, so I did two of those and six of these. Um, and then in the center here, we have the Ember Crystal, which is being put into this hopper. The item conduit won't attach to the top of this. We don't get the connection. Yeah, so a hopper will insert into the top of the table, but these conduits don't see it as something that it can connect to. Well, anyway, these conduits, so I have a item filter on there filtering the specific item that goes into each one of these slots. Mm-hmm. So that's all good. And then over here on our alchemy pedestals, I have a limited item filter on the insertion side of each one of these. And we have 31 ash piles. Yeah. Um, it turns out that the flame barrier requires 31 ash in the dawnstone and 31 ash in the silver. We have an inaccuracy of 15 on both of those. And we put 16 in there and it goes from 16 to 32, I think, right? So it's essentially one down from the maximum, 31. Anyway, so we have that on both of these. So the limited item filter on both only putting in 31 ash, 
And then we're extracting out of this chest here, which could be an interface from Applied Energistics, providing these ash piles. That's the thing that we could do. So we could fully automate that. And then this is like the ingredients for the recipe, which I mean, technically we could automate this as well. If we have an interface pointing into here saying that, you know, three of the Dawnstone, one silver and one of the Ember crystals will equal one of the flame barrier things, right? We could automate that. Uh, I don't know how much of this stuff we need and how we would go about automating this because here's the deal. Like we have to give a redstone pulse. And then we have to wait for this to run out. And then we have to wait for the item to pop off. And then we also have to wait for a certain amount of ash to leave here to make sure we fill up both of those before we fire the redstone signal again. So there's like a lot of things. Like if we set this to fire once a minute, it would probably work. Um, is that too long? I don't know. The first time I set this off, like it was doing this animation, making this sound and stuff and nothing happened. Like I literally broke the pedestal and I placed it back and I got all my stuff back. It's just like it was fired, but didn't really fire. Well, anyway, uh, we got ourselves that flame barrier and we are good to go for the next recipe. If we look in here, yeah, we can see that we have less items now. So now it's just a matter of flipping this lever over and over again. I suppose what we could do is do like an item collector that grabs that item as soon as it pops off the transmutation or what is this thing called? I can't remember. It's called an exchange tablet. Once it pops off there, we could put it into like a hopper that, you know, is attached to a comparator that would fire this whole system off again. We could do that. I don't know what the best way to do this is. Anyway, these are just things I've been playing with, trying to figure out, like, if we wanted to mass craft Ember stuff, how we would go about doing it. But this seems like a pretty good way, I would think. Yeah, then we got plenty of EMC here for more of the Ember to keep filling up our Cinder, or I'm sorry, our Ember activator. Not, not these things. Anyway, um, so now that we have that under control, I guess... If we want to fully automate that, we'll revisit this a little bit later. But we have another one of these items knocked off our list here, the flame barrier. So we can go ahead and remove that. I think the next thing that I kind of want to take a look at is this bamboo. Uh, so I'll clean up my inventory here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go figure out how to handle bamboo. So as it turns out, the bamboo shoots do have EMC, but the bamboo itself does not. So if we search for bamboo, we can find this colossal bamboo shoot. We remove this, unlearn that, and we'll just learn this specifically so we can make more of those later on. Okay, so colossal bamboo shoot. I made the advancement colossally bamboozled. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how these work. Do you just plant them on dirt and then bone meal them? Let's figure this out. So dirt, bone meal. And then we'll go, I don't know. I don't know how colossal colossal is. I don't want to like delete stuff. I made the advancements. Remember who planted them. Uh oh, should I not do this here? I'm only going to do one. Okay. Huh. That's not so bad. I was thinking this was going to be like awful. Can I? Okay. I can't bone wheel this. If I break that, we get the bamboo back. I cannot replant these. And this does not turn into a shoot. Okay. I wonder how you get more of the bamboo shoots then. Oh, it looks like I got one more back, huh? Because I have 64 again. Do you always get one back when you break these? I guess so. Oh, no, I got two that time. Okay, so now we need a way to plant, to uh, bone meal, and then to harvest. Um, I, does it always grow to the same height? If so, that might be a fairly simple thing to automate then. Let's do this, this, no, it does grow taller. Okay. So I guess what we could do, we could detect like a block update at this level here. It seems like it always grows to that level at least. Right? So when something updates next to here, we could do some kind of a redstone signal to break the bottom block, which will pop off all of them. Right? And then I guess we replant and then rebone meal and do this over and over and over again. Okay, so that's going to be our next task. Now that we kind of have a general idea how this works, we need to set up a spot for this and then automate it. 
All right, guys, so we got a simple setup here trying to automate making bamboo. Yep, so we have dirt with the colossal bamboo shoot on there. We have a dispenser that has the colossal bamboo shoots in it. And then we have an item advanced item collector on there with an item filter that's set to only pick up these colossal bamboo shoot. Um, I guess the saplings or whatever the shoots uh, either way. So when this thing grows, it'll grow up past this observer. The observer will send a redstone signal saying, Hey, this has grown to two different advanced repeaters. This advanced repeater will turn on after two ticks and stay on for a duration of 20 ticks. And then this one over here will turn on after 20 ticks and just stay on for two ticks, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to power this one for a little while. It's going to break the bamboo. And then once that's broken, it should just do a quick pulse of this dispenser to replant another one. So let's see if this thing works so far. Seems pretty good. We could probably lessen this delay, but I can shift grow these things. Mm -hmm. So that seems really good at this point. So the next stop would be to get something over here to, uh, well, I don't know. I guess we'd have to do a quick fire pulse, some kind of a, a short delay timer. Um, always trying to bone meal this particular block, right? And then once it grows, it'll do this process and it should be fine just constantly trying to bone meal. So I think that's going to be the next step here. So probably another dispenser, right? Another dispenser. I think there's a timer that we can use for this. Oh, this needs to be placed a little differently. Nope. Can't be placed that way either. We got to place it like this. Okay. So we fill that full of bone meal. And do one of those. And then we need to get ourselves a timer. Do we have? Okay. So we can do this timer here. By default, I think this is pretty slow. We want to set this to the lowest. There are 20 seconds, 10 ticks. Um, the minimum is 10. So I guess we do this. So that's a little loud, obviously. I'll just back up a bit so we can kind of see this going from a distance here. So that seems to be working pretty okay, yeah? So what we can do is just obviously get another item collector to collect the bamboo. But overall, I think this is going to be pretty good. So we could set a plight energistics up to emit a redstone signal, like turn this whole setup on. I suppose when we run low on bamboo, maybe... Um... Yeah, maybe we could have it so like it fills up that dispenser uh, with the shoots when it needs some, and then we remove all the shoots from that dispenser when we don't need it. There's a few things that we could do here. Well, anyway, it's just some ideas. We're able to automatically grow this stuff, and we don't have to worry about manually doing it. It's just a matter of turning it on and off, I suppose, at this point in time. Okay, upon further investigation of the bamboo, it seems like it is affected by the imaginary time block, which is kind of cool. But here's something that's interesting. If I break the top of it, it regrows. So I don't have to keep planting it over and over again. Apparently this kind of works like sugar cane, where you plant it once, and then it just keeps growing. As long as you don't remove the bottom, you don't have to worry about replanting. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so I haven't tried it down too. Will it grow up two more? So if, if we like chop it right here. Oh, oh my. Okay, so here's another thing. I have this all the way up here with these extra imaginary time blocks because I saw it sometimes growing up taller than other times. So if I do that. Interesting. So I don't really need that many imaginary time blocks, so it'll keep going. So we just have to break it every now and then. Now the whole reason why I like changed our setup that we had here is because I noticed that our droppers or dispensers that we were using were being affected by the imaginary time block as well. Just by having it there, there's no redstone around. It's just, no matter where I place it, it's just going. <laughs> yeah, so the imaginary time block seems to affect the dispenser for some reason. It also affects our observers. If I do that, you can see that's just constantly flashing too. Yeah, there is some weirdness here. I was under the impression that the imaginary time block only worked with plants. Maybe that's been changed in Project Ozone 3. Maybe it does work with other machines. And you can use this as a tech accelerator. 
That's definitely something that I need to figure out. But yeah, this makes this a lot simpler. All we gotta do is either put a piston or, or something right here that fires every now and then, a block breaker, piston, whatever. And then, yeah, just collector. So I went to go get this connected to a plate energistics here. And I connected a wire over to an existing thing that says D055 link device online output side D055. But it's not getting any more channels. So I was coming over here to investigate what's going on. And it looks like all of these dense cables on the top side aren't connected to anything. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Uh, D055. So this is what we're looking at right now, and this one has a full 32 channels on it. Yeah. Well, anyway, this guy right here, yeah, I'm not sure if these got disconnected or something or what, but yeah, the one that we were using over here is completely full, so we need to get a different one. So this will now be 4772, and we can just come over here and boop this, which should free up some channels over there and give us the two channels that we need on this side. Uh, so we are collecting the items into an ME interface. All of these should get sucked into the system here very soon. And then I have a level emitter underneath this block here. Um, and then we're just using a timer on top of a piston. So the timer gives a redstone signal to here, which will uh, power this block, which powers the piston. So it's just kind of like a redstone loop kind of a deal. This guy now says device online. So I have this emit when levels are above or equal to. So when levels are below, um, but we're equal to okay, so there's a redstone signal. So, this is what's going to happen. Uh, when we meet the requirements, it's just going to power this block right here. So, this piston will be extended, and then we are no longer growing this anymore. The timer still runs, which is fine, that's not really a big deal. It's happening every 50 ticks, just one pulse. Yeah, I think that'll be just okay. Um, but anyway, we want this set up so we're going to emit le when levels are above or equal to 1,000. So we should have that many bamboo in the system. Yeah, so we have 1,299. So as soon as we take out that many, this will run again until we meet that level, which should just be one or two more. There we go. Yep, so now we are at over 1,000, and this is fully automated, which is pretty awesome. I like it. Uh, probably could do away with these other imaginary time blocks. I feel like, I don't think we need that many there. Let me go ahead and just do this one more time. So that grows up too tall every single time. Yeah, that's gonna be just fine. I'm sure we won't need this really, really fast, but yeah, we'll always be able to refill, which is awesome. All right, so since we automated one item from the Urbis, let's automate another. So we need amber stars. And those are made with tree resin and amber glass. The amber glass is EMC, we don't have to worry about that. Tree resin, however, uh, we had to collect some of that a while ago. In fact, we have about a stack in our applied energistic system from when I collected this previously. But yeah, that comes from balsam saplings. We don't actually have any of these, I don't think, but they have EMC, so we can go and grab some. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll learn those and we won't have to worry about that Again, so let's grab this book. We'll put this into here. Ball, Sam, this guy, right? Oh, this guy. Oh no, I did grab a stack. Do that. All right, so let's unlearn the book. We'll learn the sapling. We'll grab a bunch of those and I'll just put that away. Okay, so we have a stack of these. Now I feel like this is probably gonna work with the imaginary time block as well. Let me go ahead and just grab some dirt real quick. We'll just toss this here. I don't remember how big these are. I feel like these are kind of um, skinny trees, like similar to this bamboo, just like one block, but I don't truly remember. Is that too far away from this guy? Let me move this closer. Does it not grow with the imaginary time block? Bone meal, or maybe it's too close to stuff and it just won't grow. I'm not actually sure. So bone meal isn't getting this to work. So we got something else going on. Either it's too close to this block or something. Maybe it needs darkness. Maybe it only grows in the herbis. There's a few different things. Let me try moving further away over here then. So we'll place that here, place that here. We got plenty of room around. And okay, so there we go. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess we just didn't have enough space. It needs a certain amount around it in order for it to work. Um, so in order for us to get the resin, we need 
I think it was called, well, actually, I don't know. Is it every single one of these logs? Does that drop in? That, okay, well, first of all, <laughs> that was with Silk Touch. We don't want to do that with Silk Touch. Um, let me swap this over to Fortune, probably. Silk Touch off. We'll break another one of those. Okay, so that gave me two. This gives me one. All right, so since that does work, the next question is, can we just use like a tree harvester with this? Uh, harvester. Yeah, okay, so we have an animal rancher. I don't know why that's that's called animal resource harvester. Um, so let's see, harvester. That is not what it's called. What is it called? It's a tree chopper. What is this thing right here? This is a tree flute extractor. Hmm, no, I don't think that would work. I can't remember what these things are. Gatherer, plant gatherer, plant gatherer. Does this work with trees? Is this how you chop trees down in this mod? I honestly don't remember. Okay, so we will grab this thing. Let's spin it around. That looks like that's facing the right direction. Let's grab power supply. And will this automatically chop our tree down? It certainly looks like it's doing something, doesn't it? Okay, and that gives us our tree resin. Awesome. So this will be pretty simple to do. We just need to set up a planter and harvester for this particular thing. Yeah, and then we can, of course, do redstone signal uh, to harvest when we run low on tree resin, similar to what we did over here. But yeah, this will just require a little bit of room, but that's not a big deal. All right, well, I'll go ahead and get this set up. We'll be back. All right, this automation has been taken care of as well. So we're using an imaginary time block to grow the sapling quickly. We're using the plant gatherer to harvest it like we saw before. We're extracting out of the plant gatherer when it harvests all the items using translocators into this interface. And that interface is connected to applied energistics. We're using a level emitter here that we are emitting a redstone signal when we are below 1000 tree resin, right? And this is working on the plant sower, so we'll only plant saplings on a redstone signal. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of the entire automation here. Once uh, we reach 1000 resin, how are we doing here? So we are up to 700. Yeah, once we reach 1000 of those, that redstone signal should go away and this should stop planting and then we will no longer be harvesting trees. So only harvest them when we do need more tree resin for future uh, auto crafting needs. Okay, so that should be the last sapling. Yep, and then this finishes up. Very good, I like it. Another nice automation done. So the final bit of that is we have to make a recipe for amber stars, right? So the system knows how to actually craft these things. Then we'll just throw that in here somewhere. Right there should be fine. Amber star. Let's craft up, well, I don't know, 10 of those. That should be good. Uh, 10 of those crafted. And are we growing more trees? It looks like that happened automatically. Awesome. So yeah, we should always keep about 1,000 of those in the system. Uh, no less than 1,000 of the resin. <laughs> yeah, so that's really, really cool. I like being able to remove things like that. Just see some automation continue in the background. Very awesome. Okay, so we now have bamboo and amber stars knocked off the list. Let's go ahead and look at HSLA steel ingots. So in order to do that, we need uh, iron dust plus carbon manganese blend in the alloy furnace. So we can pretty much do this no problem, but we have to set up a few of these different recipes here. These are things that we haven't had to do yet. So carbon manganese blend. Yeah, we don't have a way to do that. Uh, we have carbon ingots. Don't think that's going to help us. Yeah. So anyway, let's do this recipe here. HSLA. So we have 60 ingots, but we don't have a recipe for that. So we'll just go ahead and start knocking out some of these recipes. So we're going to do this. Uh, can I just do regular iron ingots? Yeah, you can just do regular iron ing ingots, it appears. So that'll be real simple then. And then carbon manganese blend. Okay, and that's going to go into the alloy furnace, this guy. 
All right, so the first part of this is done. So carbon manganese blend, let's go ahead and figure this one out. So we need graphite dust, either the extreme reactors or nuclear craft graphite, plus manganese dust. All right, um, graphite dust. Looks like we have a recipe for that, for nuclear craft. What is that doing? This is taking graphite ingots. Okay, so yeah, we got a way to do that. Uh, and then we need manganese dust. So manganese dust ingot in the Sagmill Manufactory pulverizer. Um, manganese. So we don't have a recipe to make the dust, but we do have the ingots. We do have the blocks. Do we have a recipe for the ingots? It doesn't look like that. Okay, so manganese blocks uh, can turn into the ingots through the factorizer. We've been using those for singularities, but yeah, we can also unfactorize those or I guess unblockify those in the factorizer. So let's take a look at that. So the uses on the block factorizer, we can split those to make more ingots. And then the manganese can be put through like a pulverizer or something and turn into a dust. Okay, so we'll go into the factorizer. We want to split that. And we will split like so. Yeah, I made a mistake with this pattern, I think, last episode. We'll go ahead and fix that here in just a moment. In fact, I should probably grab that right now so we can fix it. So this recipe, you guys had told me in the comments that I made the mistake. Nether amethyst. We want to take the block and go into the gems. Yeah, we got to change that around. Factorizer. All right, so that is now fixed. And I think I should have renamed this to factorize or split like these are. But yeah, we'll just have to remember that this is split unless I go and rename that. Okay, so anyway, we need to put this into a pulverizer. Like so. All right, so there's our manganese dust. So now we can make manganese dust. We already have graphite dust. All right, so now we just need a recipe to combine the two. So we want this carbon manganese blend. All right, very good. And I think that was all we needed, right? Carbon manganese blend plus iron turns into HSLA. So I just need to throw this into here somewhere. Just find a home for it. All right, so if I do HSLA and I tell it to make like 100 of those, we should be able to do that. I would like to see these numbers start rising. 76, 92. Looks like we are good to go on that HSLA. That was a fairly simple one. We'll go ahead and knock those off the list. So we still have a few more ingots to go here. We have all of these different wafers. We might look at knocking all of these out next episode. But yeah, our list of things that we need in order to make these kiosk catalysts, our list is growing quite thin. Um, the flame barriers, I still don't know about that. Like we did mess with that a little bit towards the start of the episode. Um, as far as fully automating this, I don't know if there's a better way to do that. If you guys know of a way to automate this whole process, let me know in the comments down below, because if there's like a much better way, if there's like some item from Embers Rekindled or whatever that will automate this in like a much smaller package, definitely want to know about that. But guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today. Yeah, so we got a better way of transferring Ember in the Embers mod using, what was that, the Ember Siphon and the, I don't remember, the the better emitter. So yeah, we got that done, and then way over here, we got ourselves an automated way of doing bamboo, we got ourselves a way of getting the tree resin, and then we got the HSLA steel automation set up, which is awesome. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.